We're at the end, the final episode of season two of my adventures with Superman. Yep, complete with magical transformations and all. Sorry, wrong, completely wrong um, show there. Or was it? Huh. Let's go forward and find out, shall we? So we begin where we left off as last time with Brainiac about to blow Metropolis straight to hell and making this speech. I offered my hand out to you. I gave you the chance to be part of the Empire. But you are a world in rebellion. And I'm thinking, my God, I would pay good money if he'd shut up. Eh, telling you, boy, wow. Uh, yeah, Superman and Kara have been poisoned by kryptonite and are lying on the ground there. And keep in mind the kryptonite poisoning. Yeah, that's going to be important going forward. And Brainiac is gearing up to send everybody straight to hell. So, how can Shaw and some fighter jets come to, um, you know, blast the crap out of them? They fire at it, um, it doesn't have anything, Waller is all there about, um, um, what's this sit rep, what's going on, and all of this, it doesn't do anything. So she tells Luther to get the Metallo robots back under control, right? And he's all, what do you think I've been doing, but you wanted, you wanted an unstoppable robot army. Now, here's the problem. These, these Metallo robots are so very unstoppable, powered by kryptonite, and could do all these things, unless, of course, you damage the glowing emblem on their chest, which, in case, they just absolutely shut down. Right then and there. You know what that reminds me of? Um, when in Power Rangers, Lord Zed was first introduced, and he brought these new putties that were, like, stronger, I would give in trouble until you ended up hitting the, the, the Z emblem on their chest and that would destroy them. I mean, even as a kid, I was like, that is so freaking stupid. It's the same thing with this big robot army that you have and their, and their one weak spot is the giant blue emblem on their chest. You destroy that and that's it. That's how, that's how unstoppable these things are. Waste that time. So Waller tells him that you know she is going to do what she has to do. She made a vow to she made a vow to defend Earth. What are you going to do? Well, he 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 looks at her and then takes off running because he signed up for that shit. So, so he gone. That is that is Luther's big. That was Luther's big moment. He just took off running. So again, the robots are there, and who shows up? Steel. In his steel suit shows up there and there are others helping and stuff. You know, um, Superman and them there. Like I said, the giant emblem on their chest. This is their weak spot right there. Front and center, you can't miss it. It doesn't even take much to destroy it. But that's what's going on. And then the villains show up to help Superman and his cousin. Yeah, they show up there to help. And these are the same villains, right? Who from season one were given these suits to use. And Walla, when she took over Metropolis and had martial law and all kind of thing, never, never thought for a second, hmm, maybe I should get these dangerous technology back from the criminals that we gave them to. No, let's leave them to run around with it. I mean, we're supposed to buy this because in, because in a previous episode, um, Livewire and her girlfriend, um, um, you know, Heatwave, look like two dudes. I mean, there's, there's no deny that they literally look like two dudes. Even in this picture, it's like two dudes here. You understand? You can't even tell them from this one and, you know, that's the thing about it. Right. Their whole thing was that um, they were helping Lois and, and think I'm talking about love is all that you need. You need to fight for all this nonsense. We're suddenly supposed to believe that, that you know, the villains have decided to help because they don't want the planet to be destroyed and all that. I have no problem with that, but it could have been done better. I mean, I don't sure remember this 
this um this scene from in um um Batman uh, well actually actually it's in Batman the animated series where the joining was was attacking the youth and they were um, they were attacking um Gotham and the police end up working with the with the villains it wasn't anything like you know they showed up and oh we're ready to help no the joining were destroying things Commissioner Gordon and his police officers were, 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 were trying to defend things the villain showed up um you had Mr. Free show up he frees some things with look at then he does and then Lynn Gordon watch him they do a little they do this 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 this, this, this little nod of uh, of acknowledgement he nod back and that was it that was tension you needed that you could have said okay you know they don't want the planet destroyed but they're showing up to actually help because they don't want that but no no all of a sudden now they're good guys because why apparently lois's father w when he left went out and recruited them and now they're all working for him this is the same guy who captured them and forced them to attack superman and then locked them up on that threat of torture and death but no now we're all one big happy family yeah that works out fine real fine and dandy so yeah they're there they need to get to brainiac ship to shut him down so they decide they're going and do what they have to do live wire who could now make energy you could now make electric force fields around a kind of electric bubble thing around people and they're going in there and they're getting attacked by um by by the metallo robots that brainiac has on this control and the kryptonite is affecting which I, I mean again it doesn't make sense to me we've never been explained never been explained how kryptonite works because kryptonite is supposed to be part of krypton part of the krypton that, that when it exploded it, it got it got irradiated and that's what affects them but that, that doesn't seem to be how this works you understand me because kryptonite is not just affecting the krypton it is affecting kryptonian technology which makes absolutely no sense how could how, how could something like a like an alien rock affect technology i i, I don't know it just doesn't make any kind of sense so they get on board the ship and um they're they they they're telling Brainiac that you know they're there to this they're there to stop him and he he does that just and he's like um, oh you really think you just came on here I let you on board and then he activates something and Kara apparently is having a very bad moment because I'm not sure what the hell this is but it looks like how somebody would look like if you know you had an all night rave and you just ah! And she had a bad moment there, yeah. So he affects her mind and you know takes control of it, and then then he tells Superman what really happened to Krypton. Apparently, Krypton was in battle against some other enemy force. We don't know who these enemies are, they nobody has ever said anything with it. They they basically try to allude to the fact that you know. Brainiac was the one who had gone rogue and was attacking Krypton, something like that. But no, apparently that's not what happened. Krypton was fighting some unknown enemy. You never know who this person is. And apparently they were losing too many um, warriors or kind of thing like that. So they wanted peace, right? Jorel even started peace talks and all kind of thing with this enemy who again we don't know. And Brainiac now was all about how, uh, what? Oh, they wanted peace. I was built for war. I would be obsolete. So he decided in his infinite wisdom, he was just going to wipe out Krypton. Seriously, that's what he did. So he literally opened some kind of black hole-like thing or something and just sucked all of Krypton in. But, you know, jor and his wife ended up sending um, um, Kal-El away before because jor figured out what it is Brina was going to do. And then also Kara, um, Kara's parents did the same thing. And I don't know how well this works out. So Krypton never, never exploded. Brainiac just kind of sucked it away. Which could, which could potentially set up now for, oh, you know, Krypton isn't actually gone. It, it was just transported to some other dimension or some kind of nonsense like that. It's possible that they could actually go with that. But the whole thing is really ridiculous. So you're trying to tell me that you built this computer system to help you with war 
and it became so sentient that, 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 that when you decided you wanted peace, it, it's basically said that you know what, screw all your, I don't need all your, and then decided to wipe out all of Krypton. And now Brainiac believes that he is really the last Kryptonian and he wants to rebuild the empire by killing worlds. That's really it. It makes, it's literally makes it because every planet that, that, that he has gone to, he sent Karad back to literally destroy all life on it. So it's just basically dead worlds. That's it. How are you rebuilding an empire like that? I don't know, but somehow he thinks he's doing it. Idiot. Oh yeah, so Superman finds what happened and he's crying again. Because, you know, first season wasn't enough. He's crying again. I could understand some things with that. So then he activates Kara because apparently he's had 22 years to, to, to mind Jack her like it have no tomorrow. And then she decides to attack Superman because again, he has mind jacked her and she is his puppet now who will do as he commands. Yeah, so you know, he's all... I'm not going to learn. And she's beating the shit out of him because that's kind of what happens. Uh, the, 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 the thing about it is that Lois and Jib, well, Lois especially doesn't play too much of a big part in this episode, which was, you know, good because I really can't cast Stan Jinji knowing crap. So that is what... That was mainly it. And so them going you know, so, so she and Jimmy said them going and help. I don't know how. In while Superman still getting pounded by his cousin, he tries to fight back, but you know, he doesn't want to hurt her and she's a she's a raging maniac at this point. And Brainiac is all oh, that's not going to work. Um send out all forces to attack Superman too, because why not? And apparently he has a lot of weaponry still on that ship. Why he hasn't used it is beyond me. And yeah, there's a face you would never forget. <laughs> I can imagine if that was her online dating profile pic. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I think Jimmy could be into that thing. Look at that. Holy shit, that was raw. Yeah, so she is there being a gut punch. Uh, and all of that than smashing the hell out of him. But then we have this this incident happen here, right? When um he's flying there and he starts to remember all the good times with her and stuff and he doesn't and yeah, I mean again look at her face look at it up close. Imagine that on a dating profile page. Yeah, I mean, damn. That ain't right. Yeah, and he's crying again because we didn't get enough of that in season one. Yeah, like really, really crying. I mean, seriously, dude. <laughs> what are you going for here? Super tears? But anyway, so then he starts to flip the flashback to when he was, um, you know, young and still full of hope. And I actually didn't mind this because this is kind of Superman-ish. Yeah? When you know you, you go back to what's, what makes you who you are as Superman, you know, the very essence of it, how he grew up on Earth, all the things that he had, all the things that shaped him into being who he is. So he goes back to that, that moment, yeah. And, you know, he starts to remember what's going on and he decides, okay, he's going to help her out, then he's going to get her back, no problem with it. And I'm thinking, okay, fine, we're getting this. And then it starts to get kind of weird. I mean, when you look at him dodging, some of these, some of these things there, like, you know, that, that kind of looks very Sailor Moonish. <laughs> when he, when, 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 when he's like dodging that thing, and she's still coming at him like a raging lunatic who clearly needs help. But it's still happening. So they end up here, they're doing it long, and they crash onto her. Jimmy and Lois are there, and she's attacking him, but he decides to hug her. The, you know, uh, thing which again, Superman like, I, I will admit that is Superman like, because in this instance, it could work. You understand me? You're trying to get through to her. You know, she's good on the inside. She's just being controlled here. Yes, this could work. That idiotic thing that Tom Taylor did where we were John Kent hung, um, hung, uh, I think is, um, the, the Superman who went bad on his world, that was just stupid, it had no meaning, but this actually works because 
that this is what you're trying to do. And you know, Brainiac is all that's not going to work. And then we get a flashback to just how stupid Brainiac is. Eh? I mean, you would think that, well, you know, it's pretty clear you see me right now, but you would think that, okay, you have this child growing up with the other, instill loyalty into her. Now. So she was at a, she was at a struggle against, um, you, know, t- you know, her love for Brainiac and all that he's done. And, you know, realizing that he's a monster and she has to stop him. Okay, I could no, this idiot spent years telling her nonstop how she's weak and pathetic and can't do anything. And all that she's good for is to serve and he will control. And I'm like, you really expect she not to turn on you? Look what happened to Krypton jackass because they don't know how to do anything different. Telling you non-stop and Lois and Jimmy and, and thing also there and they let down and she breaks free from it and decides that she's going to um to, to, to stop it now. So she flies up there and push the ship out of um out of Earth's atmosphere, but Brainiac um activist is kinda shield Superman of that helps and they end up pushing Brainiac out into space. So they push him out into space now, pushing him towards towards the sun and then he activates some omega zero something like that and a piece of kryptonite comes down and then he he um attaches it to the power system and tells him that how you know oh um then you think only the humans could sin could um could um synthesize kryptonite again how is kryptonite being used like that what then Walla and never had 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 like scrapings on it but somehow managed to make hundreds and now he has a piece of it and, 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 is, and is using it where did this kryptonite come from when the kryptonians are living on a planet of poisoning them daily what is going on because you just admitted that, that you literally suck krypton into a black hole or something you understand me so where did all this kryptonite actually come from it doesn't make any kind of sense how, how even Jorel would know about it but that's what he does so he activates the kryptonite and shoots them with it. And this is like the third time in two episodes they have been exposed to massive amounts of kryptonite. When he, when, when he goes to fire at them, Kara pushes Superman out of the way and she takes the blast. You understand? Again, exposing her to massive amounts of kryptonite. They should have killed them long ago. But no, they're they're both alive and then they start to fall into the um to, to the sun superman goes to the saver and all of that and then you know they end up um they realize that you know they're okay and they're absorbing the the energy from the sun and that that makes them stronger and stuff and then they've they decide they're going after him so they fly out of there you understand me going they are activating powers she have red eyes he have blue and then you know magical transformation again where she suddenly gets her own super outfit and they're flying at him they're glowing as well yeah because this is really sailor moon at his finest brainiac fires his weapon again they break through it enough with him because he ain't dead yet and he decides coming out there with a kryptonite blade at her. She charges at him. Yeah. One punch there. And he scrapes her across the cheek. And then she punches straight through him. Now, to me, I think it would have been much better had he impaled her with the kryptonite blade. And then she smashed through him. I just think it would have had more of a dramatic effect. Because she smashes through him there. And then, you know, she, she's holding his basically his power core. And then she passes out and it's all, oh, okay. And passes out and, and he's, and then Superman's all, Kara, Kara. I mean, had he impaled her and then Superman had to pull out the blade. And then she had kind of passed out. It would have had that more of a dramatic effect there. But it didn't happen. And then, you know, they save Metropolis and all of that. She wakes up in the Kent farm with a scar on her cheek. Goes downstairs there, Lois and Jimmy are sleeping. 
um Clark comes in, tells her that this is a, this is the home he grew up on, and then she meets his, she meets his parents, Jonathan Kent, who has been old from the day he was born, and Martha Kent, who's always guinea. And yeah, she's happy to meet them and all of that. And then he and um Kara go to play catch. Yeah, that's the thing. And then we get to see what happens at the end of it all now. They all show up at uh, of all the presents of shop at the Kent farm for some sort of barbecue or um whatever they and I'm wondering how this makes any sense because it's not like Kara doesn't constantly literally call him um you know Kalel, which is probably going to tip off all of them that oh by the way he's actually superman so yeah she's in her um she's in her android 18 outfit and then you know um vicky vale scooped the scooby scooby daily planet again because this is something Walla is apparently still at large because now she's a criminal. I mean, you all didn't have a problem when she declared martial law in the city. No, none of you all cared then. Literally none of you cared. But now all of a sudden, she's on the run and still at large after this. Like, yeah, that's supposed to do something. All they're going to do is just, just have a takeover task force. Excellent. That, that, that'll be the end of it. I don't know who they're trying to fool with this nonsense. I really don't, but they're trying to play this off. And then we have Lex Corp shows up now, and Lex Luthor is there with Slade. How this pairing up works, I don't know. Because just like two episodes ago, they couldn't stand each other, but now all of a sudden Lex Luthor has Lex Corp. Why? He literally ran away and left the city to get, to get blown to hell. See, this is what happens when you really do this with these characters without any common sense. Because Lex Luthor is supposed to be a cunning and brilliant tactical genius evil criminal if he would find a way to set it up to make it look like you know he did the most to save this thing but no when you're just trying to force something together but what you don't know how this is the kind of nonsense that you get so yeah lois um tells clark about the um job of fun thing i know she's not stayed he, do, he does a little wall slam thing there and she says she stayed and then you know they then you know they have their big kissing moment all four of them sit down there for a, for a little meal and stuff they they learn about some um disaster that's happening and they have to go yeah he's in his superman outfit she's in her supergirl outfit not digging either to be honest with you but that's what's going on and they say they need to go and damn um, lois said that um, it's an exclusive not leaving them behind and yeah they all fly off there with each other. You have Jimmy and Kara there. And that's the way it ended. Now, the way this ended kind of made it seem like they figured this was going to be at the end of season two. This was, this was how this was going to end. They didn't expect a third season. We know it's getting a third season, but this ended like, like they weren't expecting a, a third season. So, again, certain things about it weren't bad. The magical Sailor Moon transformations and stuff were really kind of ridiculous. And there were some things in this season that I would say were actually okay. But there was plenty that made no sense. Brainiac was literally the definition of a digital dumbass. You understand me? Um, Kara's story at certain points didn't make any kind of sense. Also, the fact that she looks exactly like Android 18, but that's that's thing. Lois was annoying as ever in many of the episodes. This last one, not so much, but in many. And there was certainly that made no sense. Understand me? One thing I, I, I will say about this this season that was actually really good was Silver Saint Cloud. Look at that woman again. I tell you, this is when you draw when you draw them right, boy. Mm. Mm -mm. But yeah, overall. The season was wasn't fantastic. It wasn't it wasn't great. It was you know my final rating for this episode, and I'll just give a rating for the entire the entire season, second season of uh, My Virtual Superman overall. I will give season two of My Virtual Superman a two point two out of five. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments. If you have a different opinion, I'd love to hear it. If you like, if you want to hit that thumbs up. 
subscribe if you haven't already ring the notification bell be notified every time i put out a new video and i shall see you all next time take care